Luna van Tolberg for Business. And with me is Professor Pierre de Foss. He is a constitutional law lecturer and a media commentator. And I was just telling him this morning, uh, we're going to talk about the public protector, how long it took to get rid of her, and the Stalingrad offense. And then I discovered in my study a copy of the Constitution that they handed out in 1996, which is, and I looked there, it's a really short chapter on how you get rid of the the public protector. Um, so, Pierre, welcome to Best News. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, can, can we start off just for people who might not know? What is the Stalingrad defense that everybody's talking about? So, the Stalingrad defense was coined really by former President Jacob Zuma's lawyer, Kemp J. Kemp, now late Kemp J. Kemp. Um, and it was uh, what he, he told the court that this is a Stalingrad defense like the Russians. Uh, in the fight with the Nazis at Stalingrad, they're going to fight uh, street by street, block by block. Uh, they, it is it's a bitter, to the bitter end fight. Um, and basically what the, the Russians did, they tried to delay and delay so that when the winter came, the Nazis would be gone, would be finished, and then they could push back. And so that is Stalingrad defense. You use every... Uh, ethical and unethical trick in the book through the legal system, through court applications to stall and to stall and to stall to make it impossible for you to be held accountable through the criminal courts or through whatever other tribunal for things you had done wrong. Well, well that begs the question, have our courts been turned into, um, you know, into war? Because people are also talking about lawfare, the fact that the uh, law and the courts are used for political arguments. It well, they, there are different things happening there. There is there is the problem of uh, lawyers on behalf of their clients really making political arguments. Some people argue that this has something to do with the fact that many of these proceedings are televised. So often, uh, you know, if uh, advocate and powerful makes an argument, it is often. For not for the judge as much as for the political audience. So that's one thing. But then the second thing is people with uh, deep pockets, people who, with access to funds, either because it's paid by the state, private benefactors, or because they have the money in their own bank account, they can pay the lawyers to bring thousands of applications, challenge every decision, uh, in, as is the case with Mr. Zuma, um, his absurd attempts to privately prosecute people so that it doesn't go forward. Those uh, prosecutions are absurd, but they are used not because we know that it is never going to end in uh, trial and conviction, but it uh, prolongs and it delays the actual prosecution uh, uh, and it prevents Mr. Zuma from having his day in court, so to speak, and to give his side of the story. Well, you mentioned Mr. Mpofu, or Advocate Mpofu, Dali Mpofu, who also tried to take you to court at some stage because you criticized his tactics. Who are the parties and the people that are employing this? Uh, well, Mr. Mpofu threatened me on Twitter, but obviously I just uh, laughed at it. But in any case, the the, the problem is, is that it is often, um, it is not only in the political field that this happens. It is a broader problem um, that uh, uh, people uh, that lawyers do the bidding in a way of clients uh, by exploiting the procedural rules that they are, for example. Uh, in, in common uh, criminal trials, what happens often is that lawyers come and they ask for a postponement for some silly reason. It's cooked up so that the case can just go on and on and on. But... Uh, in the more political realm, of course, there is the cases of Mr. Zuma and all the lawyers that he's had over the uh, the many years from Kim Jacob now to Dali Porfo. The public protector in her removal application, clearly there was a strategy to try and delay and delay the whole thing and never having to engage with the allegations, the, the facts that are damning against her. Um, and some other uh, uh, political uh, uh, cases which now <laughs> slip my mind, but it's usually from the artist RET side, not only from them. Um, and they, there's there's been actually a recent uh, judgment of the Western Cape High Court, I think, where in a in another matter, nothing political, 
the court also found that the lawyers have actually facilitated this, what is the abuse of the legal process. And they ordered the lawyers to pay private personally for the cost. That has not happened in the highly charged political cases because I think the courts, um, as the legal professional body, the legal practice council who has to oversee this, are a bit scared, are a bit, uh, uh, you know, a little bit hesitant or apprehensive to, ta to take on um, lawyers and their clients who behind them have the support of a political party with 12% of support. And the ability to make a lot of trouble. So, so uh, that is partly the problem. And the courts, as, as Justice Edwin Cameron recently in an interview said, the problem is it's the legal practice councils, the lawyers, it's the clients, and it's also the courts who have not always acted as firmly as they should against this kind of shenanigans uh, and, and the abuse of the legal process. Well, and let's look at one of the cases where this has now finally had a pushback, which is with the public protector, Ms. Um, Mr., Mrs. Mkwebane. So finally, is there finally sort of a wall against this or we, or we, will we say less of this? Um, well, we don't know. In the case of the public protector, the court, is, there, there has been now various applications throughout the two years uh, brought by Ms. Mkwebane because uh, uh, she... Uh, 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 received funding to the tune of about 30 million from the public protector's office. Uh, and instead, uh, and, and in the beginning, it seemed to have been a blank check. So she used all that money to bring the litigation. And the courts, even when they invited to do so, had, had not found in any of those cases that there was an abuse of trust. Um, it was only when the committee itself seeing that they won't be able to finish this, the, that the strategy is going to work and justice will be done, that they got a little bit stricter and said, well, we're trying to help you to give you more funds uh, because the funds then leads to the litigation, but we're only giving you $4 million. Um, and then, of course, Advocate Mukwe Barney said that $4 million, in the words of Advocate Portfo, is, is, he said $10 million is peanuts, $4 million is peanuts, and cannot lodge all these uh, further challenges. So it is really an administrative kind of decision that had that had made sure the strategy didn't work in, in Kwebani's case. But in the Zuma case of the prosecution, the President uh, uh, Ramaphosa's so-called private prosecution by Mr. Zuma, the court did finally find that there was an abuse of process. That this whole private prosecution is a bizarre and absurd and unethical abuse of the legal process. Again, though, they didn't actually uh, uh, order uh, the, the lawyers to, to pay the cost personally, even when they were asked uh, uh, to consider granting leave to appeal, and they found that the attorney and the advocate for Mr. Zuma had actually misled the court. They didn't as one would expect referring to the legal practice council. So the tide is turning, perhaps, and there are evidence in the, both the political and the less political cases that the courts are getting a little bit um, more strict. But it may be uh, too optimistic to say that it has turned uh, yet. Well, if you look at the cost of all this, I mean, if you look what 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 the public protector's case has cost, and, and this is taxpayers' money, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of number are we looking at? Well, the, one of the MPs in the debate on the removal of the public protectors uh, mentioned a, a figure of 160 million, which would now be all the lawyers, all the, the cost of flying people, uh, and so on and so on. Um, and uh, of course, that is, it's preposterous because you think an ordinary person, uh, poor, middle class, None of us can afford that kind of money, or even the thirty-four million that public protector got, um, and and it raises broader questions about our legal system, which is because it's it's a it's a system of uh, that is based on conflict. There has to be quite elaborate rules, procedural rules, and then kind of protections, and because of this. The, it allows, it, it invites kind of abuse by unscrupulous people. So, so the, the 
overemphasis on procedures and uh, underemphasis on the substance uh, is a problem. We need the rules because we have this kind of uh, adversarial system, which is difficult to have otherwise. But I think there is an argument to be made that uh, the the way in which we deal with procedure to ensure that they are fair, because they have to be fair, needs to be slightly less technical so that people cannot bring all these arguments that has nothing to do with fairness. It's just because there happens to be a rule designed for fairness that they then exploit and they're going to lose, but it is going to delay the procedure, the process for six months a year. So where should this reform come from? Well, I think the, there's a, it is a complicated matter. So the, really sh- the legal profession, I would hope, and academia should think about this and say maybe this is uh, what needs to be done. Ultimately, it is the Minister of Justice and the government, uh, will uh, maybe the Law Reform Commission will have to make proposals um, for such uh, a reform. Uh, I don't know if it's probably not politically possible because the legal profession is a very powerful lobby. And if you change the rules, it will affect the bottom line because this is the other thing we haven't spoken about is that the lawyers often take these uh, really hopeless cases that are abusing the legal system in a way because it is very profitable to do so. Um, and so uh, I don't want to make exposure, uh, cast exposures on any specific lawyer, but it is clear money is important. And if you simplify the, the procedural rules, it will uh, affect the bottom line of many of the lawyers. Well, we know what barristers and lawyers cost in countries like the UK. So, so and Dolly and Borfor mentions millions as though it's no money. So, so what kind of money does a lawyer charge for this? But I'll depends, you know, per day. Yeah, it depends very much with whether you, uh, an attorney, or uh, uh, if you're a senior counsel or a more junior person. If you're somebody that's a senior counsel, you you charge, of course, for all the work you put in. The things you read, you, you read. If there's a 500 pages, you have to read them. Um, it's maybe uh, I don't know, maybe 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 a day, um, just for appearing in court. If you have a court case with three uh, to one senior counsel, two juniors, it uh, goes to the constitutional court. It's going to cost you a few million just for your lawyer. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably. Unless it's a simple case, but it it is yeah it is a it's a huge amounts of money. Of course, some lawyers don't charge the full fee. You know, my sister is the senior counsel. She if she if there's a, a, um, indigent people, she does it for free. But not all the, all lawyers are like that. And and also, of course, if there's billing involved, it needs to be complying with the rules. But you know people who really want the money will push that rule to the edge of legality. You've written that lawmakers might be learning the wrong lesson from the yeah. fact that they finally got rid of Mkwebane. Uh, what, what is the wrong lesson? Well, the wrong lessons in two ways. I think it's the wrong lesson uh, in the sense if, if they take from this that any such process needs to bend over backwards to... Uh, facilitate all the whims of the person that is being investigated. That is the one thing. The 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 lesson that I draw draw from that is that the rules of the National Assembly about removal is clearer to curtail the possibility that the lawyers and the, the client can abuse the system, um, uh, limit the amount of funds available, and so on. But the other lesson that I, is a slightly different lesson, and that is. A uh, bit naughtily, maybe. I I fear that the the lesson they might have learned is that if you appoint somebody uh, to do your bidding for you as the public protector or in any other uh, office, the lesson you have to learn is that that person shouldn't be too incompetent and too dishonest. Uh, they need to be on your side. They need to fight and not be impartial and independent. But they need to have the basic skills. Otherwise, they're going to end up like Mkwebane whose reports have all been overturned by the courts. <laughs> that, yeah. And, and it's the problem because in the end, these bodies uh, are, star, are headed by people elected 
selected by the National Assembly in politicians. They are elected to act in their own interest in a way. So it, it's, it's always going to be tricky to get somebody appointed to any of these bodies who are actually fearlessly independent and impartial. Yeah, the other thing I'm worried about, if it's somebody none of us like, everybody thinks we should get rid of, we say change the rules, get rid of yeah. them. If yeah. they did the same thing to Judy Mott and Sela, we would all be kicking and screaming and help in all, telling her, use yeah. every rule you can. Yes, so so the, well, I don't think I would say use every rule you can because if, it, if it's a nonsense argument, nonsense, you shouldn't make it. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. I do think there's another issue that is important that you raise now, and that is, that removal must be difficult of, a, of somebody like the public protector or a judge because otherwise it can be used to undermine the independence of that institution. Luckily, uh, the, the rules of the National Assembly now provide a, a bold-in uh, safeguard, namely that there needs to be an independent panel first to see whether there is a prima facie case. So if the Julie Madonsela case, no independent panel unless they were co-opted or bought off, would have said that there's enough there to warrant any kind of impeachment procedure. In this case, it was the clearest, clearest of cases because the courts, uh, from the high courts to the constitutional court, has made findings that public protector is dishonest, biased, um, and not knowledgeable about the law, uh, and so on and so on. So it was really, it is preposterous that it took so long. In another case where somebody makes a mistake, public protector, a judge, but me, you, we all make mistakes, that should not be grounds for impeachment. It must only be in the clearest of cases. So at least in that sense, the the rules uh, was uh, is of benefit. But they can be made simplified to make it quick. Well, if you if you look at the whole money, this is uh, the last one. Look at the whole money is issue. Sure. Wouldn't it be just simple and say, well, if, uh, you know, if you found guilty, you must pay the money back. Well, you know, change, uh, perhaps change the rules that the public doesn't pay, whether these people lose or win. Yeah, yeah the problem with that is that the people won't pay back when they lose. Uh, the uh, the president Zuma, former president Zuma, uh, got unlawfully. Uh, the state to pay for many of these time and ground defenses in his criminal case that happened long before he was president. The court ordered him two years ago to pay it back. There's nothing has been paid back. So there's that problem. And it also won't, uh, because of that, people will just say, well, we'll, we'll uh, I don't know a polite word now, but we'll pull our way out of that when the time comes. They will take the money and they will run with the Stalingrad defense. So it would be better to create much tighter, stricter rules to say, this is when you're entitled. This is the kind of thing that you can do. This is, these are the kinds of appeals. Otherwise, it will be abused, uh, uh, not only by Mr. Zuma and the likes, but, you know, public officials and so on. Well, this also seems to be constantly these acts against journalists now, taking journalists yeah. to court more and more. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's part of this, uh, you see, uh, and it, it is part of the bigger issue again that people with money, not only in the public sector, but also in the private sector, big companies, they can buy uh, access to the legal system in ways that are bad for the legal system, that undermines the justice in some way, and it's all about money. Um, so that is a huge problem for equality before the law, unfortunately. Beautiful. Thank you so much.